everyone, it's Julia. Today I'm going to be trying my first attempt at a landscape art quilt. This is probably going to give you a little indication of where I'm staying warm this winter. We're here for a couple months. We're in the beautiful state of Arizona. And I drew this out of a couple of different photos that um, I took and that I also have found and just edited and did my own thing with it. And I also enlarged it and I'm going to be making a quilt. I believe it's going to be about a 13 by 14 inch when it's all said and done. But I'm going to have this available to you um, on my website. If, if any, and the link will be down below. It's just a free download if anybody else wants to try this or wants to have a, a Southwest type um, art quilt in their home. First of all, a little bit about the fabrics and just what I've picked out. I don't have all my supplies here. I'm going to say that right now. I have very limited, different. I mean, I did bring different colors of fabric. I forgot my thread. I just have like black and white thread here. And, and I have a clear thread that I bought, I purchased. So I'm, I think I'm going to be using clear thread on with this. But a little bit about the fabrics. I have a blue for the, for the sky. And then there's two different hills or whatever you mountains or whatever in the background and and just to let you know that the the back the the ones that are behind are usually grayer or or a little bit lighter and don't have as much detail on them and then the ones in front are brighter and and have more detail and so I just I picked this one I thought I just love the, I love the southwest colors and I thought this was a, a very good print for that this middle ground one is is green and it does have some other vegetation back there that I'm going to try to add to with some embellishments um, and then the sand and then it, it on top of everything would be the cactus which is going to be in the foreground and also um, this shrub that I that I'm going to be putting on with free motion the first thing I want to do is to, to to work on my background and so I'm going to be cutting the pieces for the background first um, quilting that first and then adding the embellishments and the other foreground elements on top of that so let's get started I hope you enjoy this once I printed out my pattern piece it's in four pieces and so I just tape that together into one pattern and I'm using freezer paper to trace these pattern pieces I have the waxy side down and I'm and I'm just copying this or tracing on the paper side of this freezer paper. I'm doing the blue sky first and you notice that dotted line on the bottom. I add about a quarter of an inch to those pieces that are tucked underneath and I usually dot that just so that I know from my own reference that that'll go underneath. Labeling with a writing what colors I'm going to be using just so I don't forget when I cut these pieces out. They all kind of look the same, so I just want to make sure I, I know what I'm doing. And then one last one. Well, this is the green, and then I have the sand here to go. And then I rough cut these out. I don't cut, cut on the line at this at this point. I am just roughly just cutting roughly cutting these out and now I'm going to be ironing this so that I'm ironing right on the right side of this you can you can also iron on the back side but then you want to flip your pattern around and I'm just going to be cutting right on the line this time to get those pieces cut out exactly if you follow me for a while you know I use heat and bond a lot to attach my applique pieces I've chosen not to do this this time I didn't want any added um, bulk or stiffness to my little mini quilt and so I'm going to be attaching these with a temporary spray a basting spray I'm going to link all my things that I use down below for you um, and I just using this roasting pan to put my pieces in now I'm going to be spraying these on the wrong side of the fabric just very lightly spraying it what is nice about this this spray is you can reposition those pieces a few times and you know 
just get get them where you want them to be. I'm using, I'm putting them right on the warm and natural batting. So they're going right on the batting. And again, I'm positioning it. This one I decided to use the wrong side of the fabric up because I wanted it to be a little duller. So always keep that in mind when you're working with your fabrics. You can certainly use the wrong side. I do recommend using a, a old box or like this roasting pan to do the spraying just to eliminate mess in your sewing room. Just again figuring out where I want things and then flipping it over, spraying. And smoothing it out. I'm using a polyester clear thread for both my top and my bob, my bobbin. I like this polyester thread because it, it does withstand more heat than a nylon thread. And I'm going to be just edge stitching right along each of these pieces using my regular sewing machine to begin with. And you can see how I've edge stitched the pieces and also what it looks like on the back. And now I'm, this is, this is a piece of freezer paper that I put, took off of the sky piece. And I, with my, just with a pencil, I am drawing the design that I want to make at my sewing machine with my free motion stitching. This just helps me figure out, because sometimes when I get to the sewing machine, I just can't think of, of what to do. And so I just take this guide with me to the sewing machine so I can look at it. And I don't do it to all the pieces. I'm just believe just the two bigger pieces, the sky and also the sand that I decided to do a little bit different stitch on just to add some interest. And here I am with the sand and again I'm just like I'm just doing just doing a, a little swirl design there. I'm at my sewing machine and I have my free motion foot on. I have my feed dogs dropped. And I do have that clear thread both in my bobbin and on the top. And I, I'm starting these, I'm trying to start right at the edge where I know my stitches are, or my thread is not, not going to matter. But if I do have to start in the middle of my quilt, you do want to draw that bobbin thread up when you're, when you're doing a quilt. I do start and finish as often as I can right on the edge, so I do not have to, to, to worry about my, my thread being, or, or tying my knots. And I am just drawing, kind of looking at my guide for this, for this sky, and then just drawing with my, with my thread. And I'm just finishing up with the sand part, doing it very much the same way. On the other pieces, I am just outlining them basically and just keep going around. Notice I don't wear gloves. I, I need to get gloves. It's so much easier to, to have grippy gloves when you're doing this. And here's the, what it looks like. Just lots and lots of stitches and it really has a fun quilt look, both on the front and the back. I've picked out some yarns there and also wanted to share with you this piece of of lace that I dyed and how I how I dyed it. It's a piece of vintage lace um, that I wanted to, to have a green shade to. So I'm using my Ink Tense Blocks by Durant and I, just a little bowl there and I'm just taking that block and putting some of that color onto it. And then just taking my spray bottle and, and spritzing that or activating that color. You can see the color in there and then I'm just swishing this around getting that color all over that lace and then setting this aside to dry. Now remember, ink tense blocks are, made, are an ink 
and once they're activated with water and once they dry they are permanent and so it's a fun way to add color to, to a lace or a fabric that you want just a little extra to. I picked out two different colors for my cactus and there's a shadow color and then a lighter color so I did want to to do to do two different um, colors on my cactus and the photo that I that I had found had that shadow on it so I didn't have to do any you know it was easy I did I didn't have to, to figure that out on my own just have to kind of look at your um, your photo and just see where those shadows are doing the same thing with my freezer paper and cutting out my two pieces from my cactus roughly cutting and then doing more of a fussy cut. And then again spraying the two pieces. And then laying them onto my quilt. I'm using my pattern as a guide and then getting that shadow part of that cactus on there. I found a dark brown piece of fabric and I'm just randomly cutting some strips off of that to add for the shadow. And again this was right on the photo. You could see where those shadows were. Cutting piece of that lace and just going to be adding this just for texture. I do have some of my fibers with me and, and I thought this one was perfect for adding another layer. It has a real grassy look to it or it's real hairy. So it's a great addition. Just kind of putting it all over just some pieces here. And now with my sewing machine, I am going to end free motion with my clear thread. I'm going to attach those little bits and pieces that I added. And here I have them all, all sewn on. And you really very, you really can't even see it on the back side with that clear thread. I want to add my shrub now, and I'm going to be putting that on with free motion. So I'm using a sulky, a salvi by sulky, and this is going to dissolve in water or disappear in water. And it's also, it's, you can see through it, so you know exactly where you're placing that shrub on your, on your quilt. I can see through it easily, and so I'm going to be just tracing this. And I'm using my Uniball pen. I'm going to link that down below as well as the salvi that I use. Ballpoint pens do not mark on this, so you really have to experiment to see which pen is going to work for you. But I really love using this Solvi for this technique. And just tracing this out. I can lay this piece right on my quilt and get it exactly where I want it. And then I'm just going to add a couple pins just to keep it in place while I'm at my sewing machine. I decided I wanted to add a couple little pieces of shadow. So I'm placing those underneath the film there. And those I will also just stitch when I, while I'm stitching this shrub. I, I'm, keeping the, I'm going to be keeping the, the clear thread in my bobbin, but I am going to... Um, put like a dark brown thread for my shrub. Because I'm starting in the middle of my quilt, I am pulling up that bobbin thread and sewing down the, the shadow first which is underneath that film. You can see that film just hanging there. And now I'm, I'm putting that film down and I will, will start 
machine um, stitching my shrub. And I'm going back and forth just to, to getting a little bit more pronounced. Um, this is a real fun thing to, to free motion stitch because it's, it's, you know, there's nothing straight about a, this little shrub and it's easy to do. Just put these little shoots going all over. And I'm following my my drawing, um, but not not exactly. I'm one one thing wonderful about free motion stitching it, it you, it's it's drawing with your thread. It's really easy to re to remove this film, and it doesn't distort your stitches. Just gently take off the big pieces, and then all the little pieces I just leave on. And I just take my spray bottle and just spray it. I'm misting it now with a spray bottle. And then I and then I like to take a paper towel and just wipe it. And then most of it'll come off. If you still feel like some of it's on there, you can just spray it again and it will completely disappear. I have this piece of vintage lace. It has this wonderful netting on it. And I just thought too this was going to add some really cool texture to my sand. So I decided to add a little bit more embellishment. It also has this really cool edging on it. And I'm just cutting a few of those out and again adding that to my piece. This will be put on with clear thread both on the top and the bottom and again with free motion. Everything is to my liking now and I'm just going around and trimming any excess batting and um, backing off of this quilt. I will be binding my quilt and also um, putting a, a hanger type thing on the back of this. Here you can see that. And I use Crafty Gemini's technique for this binding and I'm going to be linking her video on how to do this down below. It's really easy and simple. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I did include a couple photos at the end here. Thank you so much everybody for joining me. Bye for now.